If you remember in the lecture about variables, when I mentioned or introduced Booleans and they are true or false, they have that value, I said they are used for the control flow of our program. And this is what we're going to talk about today. We are going to use if statements, or that is the control flow, to determine what we are going to do next in our game because, and I say game, in our app, in the program, whatever you're programming. So when you program something, a game or whatever, there are always choices that you can make. So for example, are going to take the road B or road A? And based on that decision of your player, you will execute a specific thing. So if he went to road A, maybe you will you will add an enemy as a wolf. Maybe if he goes to road B, you will add an enemy, I don't know, a jackal or whatever. And that, or for that, we can use if statements, which goes like this. We can say if, and the condition goes here in parentheses, and that condition needs to evaluate to be true. So here we need to evaluate that condition to be true in order to execute what's inside of this if statement. So here, if I copy this line of code and if I paste it, I'm going to say instead of the subtraction of A and B is, I'm going to say the condition is true. So if I were to run this program now, if I click over here, build it and yes, we will see that the condition is true is printed in the console. Of course, this is hard coding. We will not have something like this in our program. We will add here conditions. We will come to it in a moment. We will see what conditions can we have. But this is the if statement. Now I said the control flow, we have true and false. How can we know if something is false? Well, we have an if else statement. So we can say here else like this, if it's not true. So if this condition is not true here, I am going to print the condition is not true or the condition is false. So we can go over here and we can say the condition is false. Now, if I were to run this and print it now, we will again print the condition is true because we didn't change here. The condition is still true. If I pass here false on the other hand, and if I run now the program say yes over here, we will see the condition is false is, bring, is being printed in the console. Okay, so this is the control flow of our program or, or of our game. So let's see a practical example. So let's say here, for example, you have int a, which has a value of, I don't know, five, for example. Here we can test if a is greater than six, then we're going to say here a, so we're going to say here a is greater than six, for example. And else, and now notice here, else here we can say A is not greater than six. So here I can go and just remove this. A is not greater than six. What do you think will be printed in the console? Well, of course, A is not greater than six. So if I go here and run the game, A is not greater than six. But notice we have A is equal to five. How can we test more conditions? Well, we can go here, we can say else if, for example, A is greater than three, then here we can say A is greater than three. So not greater, we're going to remove that greater than three. So what is going to be printed now? So let's go here and we will see that A is not greater than three or actually A is greater than three is being printed in the console. And here you can have multiple conditions like this. You can say else if A is greater than, than three, else, else if, for example, here I can say A is less than 10 or actually less than two, for example, like this. And here I can say else if A is greater than two as well. And at the end, we can also have a default one like else. If neither of these above are true, then we will execute the one here in the else. Because if we don't have the else, for example, if I go over here and we don't have else, then if nothing here evaluates to be true, we will not execute anything. But if we have else, then we will at least execute what's in the else statement. Now, also one thing that I want to point out here is, how does this control flow work? How does the execution of it work? Because over here, this condition is true. If A is greater than three, A is five, five is greater than three, that is true. But also here, A is greater than two, that condition as well is true. Because A is five and five is greater than 10, than two. Well, it goes 
step by step. So this is the first condition that it's going to check. So this one, if this is not true, it will move to check the next one. And if this is not true, it will move then to check the next one, so on and so forth. But for example, if it checks this one and this evaluates to be true, it will execute the code that's inside here and it will break out. So it will not continue to execute the code that is below, which means this over here, even though it is true, it will not get executed. If, however, we do something like this, else if A is greater than eight, and now over here, I'm going to use this to print to the console, I can say else if A is greater than two, and I can go over here, yes, to run it, and let's see what's gonna be printed, A is greater than two. So you see, A is greater than two. So yeah, based on what is the first condition that is true that will be printed or that will be that evaluates to be true that code will be executed or the block inside of that if or else if statement will be executed and it will not continue to execute anymore but let's say over here if i say if a is greater than 5 what do you think will this execute no this will not a is greater than five, it will not execute over here. And I'm going to remove the else statement. So we're not gonna have anything. And if I go over here and if I build it, will something be printed in the console? Nothing is printed in the console. The reason for that is we are testing here if A is greater than five. A is five, five is not greater than five. Five is equal to five, which means this will not be true. And you saw we, don't, we didn't have the else statement, so nothing was executed. But if I go over here and say else, and I'm going to take this line of code, copy it and paste it. And I'm going to say else. So here I'm going to say else is executed. So now if I go over here and say yes to run the app, we will see that else is executed because all other conditions above were not executed. Okay. And by the way, I just use here greater or less than you can also test here if it's greater or equal to, for example. So if I go here, if a is greater or equal to five, we can say a is greater or equal to five. So if I were to run the game now and say, yes, we will see that a is greater or equal to five is printed in the console. The reason for that is because we tested two conditions at once. We didn't only test if a is greater than five. Instead, we tested if a is greater or equal to by using greater than, you see, greater than and equal sign. This is how we test if it's greater or equal. So in both cases, if a is greater or equal to that number, then this will evaluate to be true. We can also test if it's less than or equal to. If you want to test if exactly it is equal to five, you will use double equal sign. Now pay close attention, please. Pay, pay close attention now. Well, you see when you declare a variable, you use one equal sign because when you use one equal sign, you assign what's on the right side, you assign that to the left side. But when you use the double equal sign here, you are asking if what's on the left side, is it equal to what's on the right side, if their values are equal. So pay attention when you're using that. If you use here a single equal sign, it will not work. If I go over here and run the app, you will see now it will not work. I mean, still here it is printed uh, a is greater or equal to five, but yeah, we have a problem. You see over here, symbols cannot find, PDF file, exited with code. Anyways, this will not work. So trust me on that one, it will not work. You need to use if A is double equal to test that to make sure that, well, it is equal. Now this is one condition flow that we have, if else statement or else, else if statement. So yeah, we have another control flow that we can use, which is called a switch in case. So here we can say switch and we can say here a, and essentially what this is going to do, this switch is going to test this value a and based on the outcomes here that we ha have. So for example, we can say case one and here I can say break. And here I can say something like std colon colon c out like this. We can say the value is one like this. And then I can end the statement like this. And here I can continue, I can say case two. Well, actually I'm going to copy this because it's tedious to write everything line by line. So here I can say case two, three, four, for example. Here I can say case two, case four, and case five. And here I can say the value is two. Here I can say value is four. And here I can say value is five, not six, but five. 
what do you think will execute or print in the console when I run this? Let's test it out. I mean, you already know it's going to say a or the value is five. So how does switch and case work? Basically, it's another variation of if else statement. You see, we basically add the value that we want to test inside. In this case, it's the value A. So switch, meaning take into switch A, so test their values. And now we provide cases. So here, case one, meaning if A is equal to one. Here, case two, meaning if A is equal to two. Case four, if A is equal to four, you get the point. This is like if we are testing if A is equal to one. If A is equal to two, if A is equal to four, so on and so forth. And by the way, if I say, for example, here six, then here we will say value is six. But if I print this, we will not print anything in the console because five, so the value of A is five and we're testing cases for one, two, four and six. How, how can we use something like a default value, you know, like if and then else if, else if, and then we have else. So else will be executed if nothing above evaluates to be true. How can we do that in this case? In this case, we can have a default value like this. So we can say default call on and here we can say break and notice this break, by the way, this will break outside of the switching case. So if we execute this code and then we hit the break, it will exit outside. Everything what's below will not be executed. So here I can see say something like not the value, but I can say the default. So default was executed like this. And if I go hit the play, yes, we will see here in the console, the default was executed is printed because again, this is like if a is equal to one, then else if a is equal to two, else if a is equal to four, else if a is equal to six, else, if neither of these are true, execute what's over here. So this is also another way that we can have a control flow in our program, how we can control the outcome, what will happen and so on and so forth. So this is like a variation of if else or else if statements. Now I was using integers as an example. This right here will work with floats, with doubles, with strings, so on and so forth. Same with same applies to the if else statement as well. So that we can also test floats, integers, we can test strings, so on and so forth. But I'm using this like a consistent way, just testing one variable. You can use, you can practice now on your own. I encourage you to practice on your own to try to test if a value is greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, same as what we did a moment ago. So you can rewind and see the code and test it on your own to practice a little bit the switching case and if else statements. But basically this is the control flow of our C++ program and we will see examples of this when we start to work with our game as well. So that is it for this video. I will see you guys in the next one.